calcium is being absorbed. Wow. So, so the problem is, is that. So in Sweden, there's a huge population of Somalis that have migrated to Sweden. And they have been identified as being severely vitamin D deficient because a lot of the Somalis have off, they're also like, like autism rates are really high there. And there's this link between, I published a link also between vitamin D and autism. But so there's been studies looking at vitamin D levels in the Somali population. I mean, they are so deficient because you're taking, again, you're taking someone who's supposed to be, who's, you know, evolved to be getting a lot of sun, um, but not burn from it, and then and then putting them in a place where they, they can't get any vitamin D from the sun. And if they don't get a supplement, like, they're going to be deficient, wow. you know? And they're so much more likely. They're, they're like, it's, it's wreaking havoc in Sweden on the Somali population. That is so logical. Yeah. It's, it's, it, and then, okay, no, so elderly, elderly are like insanely more deficient. I forgot the exact number. Obese also, obese people are like, three times more likely to be vitamin D deficient in the United States. Why is that? Because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin uh, and it's less, it's, it's been shown to be 50% less bioavailable. So you have to, re after you make it in your skin, it's stored in fat and you know, it's released when, you know, basically into the bloodstream and then it can gets converted into a hormone. This hormone regulates 5%, more than 5% of the human protein encoded human genome. That's a lot of, that's a, it's a hormone. Like, can you imagine just walking around without testosterone? You're a man. That's a hormone. I mean, like, because there's a lot of people that are deficient in vitamin D. And it's a steroid hormone. It gets converted into a hormone. Wow. Like, this isn't just a vitamin, you know? It, it's important. It's really important. Um, so I went off on a tangent. But anyways. Uh, what Can I ask you this Why we're off on this tangent? Yes. What is ha when you what is happening to people when they are vitamin D? Like what's happening in the uh, vitamin D deficient? What is happening in the body that's causing their immune system this this hormone deficiency? Not having this vitamin D, whether it's through sun exposure. So, or so there's diet. lots of things. I mean, it plays a cr there's vitamin D receptors on like your immune cells, and and the reason for that is because when the hormone vitamin D hormone binds to the receptor, it activates all these genes, and that the genes do stuff. That are you know regulate immune function. You know there's there's studies that have shown people, and I love these studies because because they basically take away people's complaints about you know there's lots of epidemiological studies showing that low vitamin D is associated with disease X Y or Z, and everyone's like, well you know they're out in this they're not in the sun as much, so they're not as healthy, they're not as physically active, they're not whatever. Even though those confounding factors are usually corrected for. It's all, at the end of the day, it's, a, it's an association, right? And everyone's like, correlation's not causation, which is true. But sometimes you got to, like, look at the full body of data, you know? Um, there are genetic polymorphisms. So, so there are people that have variations in genes that cause them to genetically have lower vitamin D. And so this, this is called Mendelian randomization, where you can take a person that's, that has a genetically, like, it's ge they're genetically low vitamin D. So you're not categorizing them based on their vitamin D levels. You're categorizing them based on their gene. And those people are more likely to die from respiratory infections just based on that gene alone. So, wow. uh, yeah, that gene that it's known to lower, it lowers vitamin, it, it leads to lower vitamin D levels. And so, like, those people are more likely to die from respiratory infections than people that don't have that, which... It's a great way of kind of randomizing people by their genes as opposed to doing a randomized control trial. Those have been done as well. There was a study that was over 25 randomized control trials, people that were given a vitamin D supplement, varying doses, either weekly or daily, monthly didn't work. Um, they're the people with low baseline vitamin D levels, so people that were like deficient, they were 50% less likely to have a respiratory tract infection if they were taking the vitamin D supplement, over 50% actually. And people that had already normal levels still had a protective effect. They were 10% less likely. So even people that were already considered normal, taking a vitamin D supplement helped prevent the respiratory tract infection. Can you take too much vitamin D? Yes, you can. You can. Like what's so, too much? So right, so the the upper the tolerable upper intake has been set by um, the nutrition board, the Institute of Medicine, to be four thousand IU's a day. Um, but there's been studies that have shown that um, you can, I mean, pay, people that have taken you know ten thousand IU's a day for for multiple years haven't had any hypercalcemia or had you know um, problems. But too much vitamin D can be toxic. It's not good to to take that. 
um, it's best to like get a vitamin D blood test. And I think that personally, um, there has been a trend. So people that have blood levels higher than 60 may have just a little bit higher calcium levels, but not much, not like it's not like anything to be hugely concerned about. But there are studies also showing that either vitamin K1, so there's been uh, a meta-analysis looking at uh, uh, 12 different studies, I think, where vitamin K1 or vitamin K2 were given, and both of those improved bone mineral density and prevented any hypercalcemia. Because when you take vitamin D, you absorb calcium better, like something crazy, like 40% more dietary calcium is being absorbed. Wow. So, so the problem is, is that Calcium can easily form a precipitate in, in, in general, and particularly when phosphorus is around. And phosphorus is another thing vitamin D does increase the absorption of. Um, but again, like I said, you know, it's, re- like, it's really hard to find any studies where vitamin D is causing you know, hypercalcemia unless it's like really, really high dose for, for a while. Um, I personally think taking the, the vitamin K – and what's interesting about the vitamin K1 versus vitamin K2 – with, without going into too much of a tangent, is basically um, the the vitamin K1, normally it goes to your liver and it's involved in blood coagulation. But when there's enough vitamin K1 around, it stays in the periphery and it moves calcium, periphery being bloodstream, it moves calcium out of the bloodstream and takes it to places where it's supposed to go, like the bones and the muscle. Um, vitamin K2 usually stays around in the periphery, not, doesn't really go to the liver. So it usually that's usually what it's just doing is, you know, moving calcium out and bringing it to the bones. And so I take a... I actually have K1 in my multi that I take, but I also take a K2 supplement, MK4. I take it like a couple times a week. And what, what dose are you taking for K1? I, well, the K1 is in my multi, so I don't K, – vitamin K1 is um, really – it's found in dark leafy greens. So I get a lot of those as well. I get a lot. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of K1. Um, vitamin K2 is not as – it's not as readily found in like the Western – I mean, it's like the, the food that's highest in it is that – fermented soybean natto mm-hmm. uh, but it's like small quantities and like do you cheese. ever get concerned from the high volume of leafy greens do you ever get concerned of oxalates or getting kidney stones or anything along, along those lines no, no. I, I, I like the few studies that i've seen it's in people that are like doing insane juicing and mm-hmm. they're already like messed up you know so I've, i'm not concerned at all like even like the oxalates so oxalates actually I don't want to go into this, but <laughs> so yeah, no, I don't concern. I want the vitamin D thing is so important to okay. me. 